Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you are new here. I am Martina Lily and today uh, we are going to do a full face of makeup products that I personally think are incredibly underrated, underhyped and they, they deserve more love and attention from the makeup community if you will. And I've also included skincare just for an added little fun element if you will <laughs> so hopefully that all sounds interesting to you guys if it does go ahead and do the youtube thing like subscribe hit that notification bell let's get into it all right friends zoomed in nice and close no filters 4k all that jazz everything i use on my face today will be linked in the description box down below for you guys if you are interested in knowing what is on my face uh they are affiliate links though so if you do shop through them thank you so much i truly appreciate it all right let's start off with skincare just because i thought why not now my first step in skincare is always the uh, neod superoxide dismutase saturated mist i have spoken about this for years and years and years i use this as my toner I literally, I've gone through, I reckon, maybe 10 to 15 bottles of this. So I just spray them on, on like this. I give myself a good dousing of it. And I can't live without this. Like if I have been slack and not noticed that I'm about to run out and then like haven't had a chance to repurchase it and I have a few days without it. I really notice that my skin hydration levels, like my skin just feels tighter and drier. I don't know what magic is in this bottle, but it just plumps my skin and makes my skin feel so much extra hydrated. I love it. Next up, we have my eye cream. And now for my morning eye cream, I personally love to use the Banish Eye Brightener Cream. So I have used this before on my channel a few times and I mentioned it in like a favorites and everything before. I love the Banish Eye Cream for the morning because it's a nice lightweight type cream, um, but it's really incredibly hydrating and it's packed full of a heap of beautiful uh, skincare ingredients and like caffeine and aloe and everything. And I just find it's so cooling on the under eyes. So for the morning, for like my kind of puffiness and like to wake up for the day. I just find this is perfect. And then it's super hydrating, but it's very, very lightweight. So I just find it doesn't like feel too heavy on my face or like feel too heavy with concealer on top of it, that kind of a thing. Then what I do is I have my serums. Now this serum, oh, sorry, I should mention all of these skincare products that I'm talking about. I personally think they are underrated. Like, cause I don't see a lot of people talk about these skincare brands or products, at least from like the algorithm that I have and the content that I get. So it, like every single product I'm using today, I think is underrated and deserves more hype, okay? If I didn't make that clear enough. Now, this is the new Allies of Skin Serum. So this is the Multi-Peptides and GF Advanced Lifting Serum. And this is incredible. <laughs> like, absolutely incredible. So you can use this AM and PM. That's what I do. It's got 9% Lifting Peptide Complex, 3% cannot pronounce SH Oleogopeptide complex MSM and copper lysinate and then other words that I can't pronounce. It basically addresses signs of aging including wrinkles and sagginess while restoring the look of visibly lifted and tightened skin with this advanced lifting serum. And when I tell you my skin has never looked better, my skin has never looked better. So I just take a small amount like this. It does say I think to apply like three pumps. I only apply the one pump just because it is an expensive serum and I kind of want it to last as long as possible. So um, I find I'm getting really good results just from the one pump. But you know, just if you want to follow the, uh, the instructions, keep that in mind. I love it so much. Also, this is going to be a very, very person specific thing. I could not love the smell of this serum more. It reminds me of, and this is very specific, and I don't know if this is an Australian thing, but Maggi dry noodles, you know, they're like two minute noodles. I don't know if every country in the world has Maggi, but in Australia, we have this Maggi brand of noodles, like the packet ones, put hot water in the microwave and they cook, right? They, it, the serum smells like the raw Maggi noodles. And it's just so nostalgic for me because as a kid, I used to love to eat the raw Maggi noodles. I don't know if this is an Australian thing, but it smells like that. And so I could not personally love the smell of this serum more, <laughs> but it's a very specific thing. It does not smell bad though, I don't personally think. It's not like a florally smell. It doesn't have any fragrance and it's obviously just the ingredients that smell like that. And I just freaking love it. <laughs> 
Um, but I really have found since I've been using this, like my skin is just, since I've been using this whole skincare regime together, like my skin has just been its best ever. So this portion of the video is sponsored by Banish Skincare. So thank you so much to Banish for sponsoring today's video. But just because this is sponsored does not mean this is not my true and honest opinion. You can go back to my yearly skincare favorites last year. I talked about this product. I did receive it in PR, but I would repurchase this with my own money constantly. This is also another product that I just will never be without since I've had it because it has truly changed the game for my personal sensitive skin. I should also say I have sensitive acne prone red skin and it just feels aggravated a lot of the time. So this is the Banish Fighter Gel. And this is a product that is like a cooling anti-inflammatory product. It helps reduce breakouts, reduce acne spots. It helps reduce redness. It helps soothe like itchy skin. It is phenomenal. It has a whole host of amazing ingredients in it, including aloe leaf juice, which I have been finding aloe leaf extract or juice in a product for me and my skin is wonderful. But this is, and it's like a light water-based gel. So I'll show you like this. You might not be able to see much because I've honestly nearly used all of this up in here. And I already have a backup if you're wondering. Like I cannot be without this product. It's like this one now. Other products, I can kind of get around it. I have other faves that I could get in a pinch that I can use. But there's two products now that I just cannot live without. And it is these two in specifics. If you have acne prone skin or eczema or like sensitive skin in any way, I can't recommend it enough. So I just pull out about like I just yeah pull out about that much and rub my hands together. And it is so cooling on the skin. Again, it has no fragrance or anything like that. It's hydrating. It is, but the best thing about it is honestly a cooling feeling. It's like that Chanel Water Fresh tint feel where you just feel like you've put your head in like a nice little cooling pool almost. It's delightful. But my skin has had dramatically less breakouts since using this particular cream. I use it morning and night. I use these two morning and night. These are the, my two like serums, if you will. I only use them. I don't have any other serums that I incorporate at the moment. And I swear by it because even if you've gone back, say like a few years, if you've been watching me for a while, you would have seen the progression on my skin. I have had periods where I've gotten like quite a few breakouts. Like you can see the scarring and stuff on my cheeks. Um, I also have like times where I just get like all these little red bumps underneath my skin where they're not actual pimples, but they kind of look like it, but they're not like raised or anything. Um, I've had a lot of trouble with ingredients in cosmetics as well, including like fragrance and stuff. And since I've been using this, I don't have those problems as much, hardly at all. So yeah, I swear by this stuff. I truly do. If you are someone that suffers from acne prone skin, sensitive skin, redness on the skin, check it out. Truly, hand on heart, swear by this product. Next up, I do my moisturizer, which is the Allies of Skin Peptides and Antioxidants Firming Daily Treatment. I love this for a daily moisturizer. I've gone through three of these already. I just take about that much. I find that this is the perfect level of hydration and lightness on the skin because I don't want anything too heavy. Where I live is always quite hot. I have oily combo skin at the best of times, but this still impacts, like imparts like a deep level of hydration into my skin and it feels refreshing and I love it. And I'm, like I said, I'll just continue to repurchase that. And then lastly, I found a new sunscreen that I don't know if you can get this globally, so I'm sorry, but I know you can get it in Australia. This is the To Save Face SPF 50 Plus Brightening Sun Serum from Mecca Cosmetica, and it has a 3% radiance boosting nine cinnamide in it. Packaging of this is so bad though. It's like a dropper and it's, they need to change the packaging. But the actual like product itself, is really nice now if you have been around here before I'm not putting on much by the way because I'm actually staying home all day and I don't get a lot of light and all that kind of stuff so I'm just doing like a little protection level I know you should put more on if you're going outside okay um, I have always suffered well not suffered sorry I always have found it hard to find a fragrance that doesn't break me out there's like a fragrance why do I keep saying that it's stuck in my head now a sunscreen that doesn't break me out um, previously it's always just been the Purito sunscreen but I recently I um, actually got this one in a, uh, actually as my birthday gift, sorry, from Mecca as like part of the rewards. 
and I've really taken to it, really taken to it. Like I'll repurchase it. It's really a great sunscreen and I just, I do love the level of like glow and hydration that it gives the skin. Um, and it's a great sunscreen. It does the job of it. So that is my skincare routine. We are now going to move on to my makeup look. We're going to start with eyes and I had two kind of eyeshadow products, I guess, brands, if you will, uh, that I was like tossing up between. One was the Raban eyeshadow quads because I, I mean, I've done a full Raban review before. I love them. I talk about that brand all the time. It is so underrated, you guys, Raban. But the other one, I just am like, you know, it, it, you can't go past it and it's Viseart. So I know Viseart does get a bit of hype, but I just truly don't feel like Viseart gets the intense hype that it should get for the quality and also the price point of their products when including in that quality. Now I have like 10 or more Viseart palettes. Um, one of their latest is this one, the, what is it called? Cashmere Charmeuse, Charmeuse palette which is this, which I have a full review with like in-depth swatches and everything in it. I absolutely love and adore it. Um, the Cashmere palette from them, the Etendu, I wore that for my wedding day. That's how much I love it. I also love with like the Viseart ones, you can like pop the little, like you can mix and match them because the pants pop out is what I'm trying to say there. Um, so I've picked out that one. I actually think I'm going to mix a few which might be annoying, so I'm sorry if that is. I've got the Dark Edit from Viseart, which actually my beautiful friend Melina sent me. So thank you so much, Melina, because I've had this on my wish list for a while. And then I also have the London Etoile, Etoile little mini palette as well, because there's a few shades in each. So I'm kind of like with what I'm wearing, I don't know if you can see, but I have this like a heap of different colors in there. So I'm like tossing up whether I use this as a metallic or this one but I'm thinking this one because that's not something I would normally use I don't think whereas the other shade I would use all the time you guys see me use those kinds of tones and then I also really kind of I think I want to dip into like this greeny army color as well so yeah I'm gonna dip and play which hopefully you guys are all okay with <laughs> now um eye primer I'm actually going to use the Viseart eye primer as well because we all know the Rare Beauty eye primer. I feel like Rare Beauty gets so much hype. <laughs> it really doesn't need any more. Same with like the Hourglass one and the NARS one. But I bet you didn't know, or maybe you didn't know, that Viseart has an eye primer and it's exceptional. It really is. Um, and does deserve more hype because it is very much like the Rare Beauty one, to be honest with you. It has a beautiful, like it goes on nice and slick and then it just has this beautiful little grip to it. And it really does extend the wear time of your eyeshadow and then for I don't know if this was if previously Viseart only shipped to us uh, to the US or if it was just that they didn't ship to Australia but on the Viseart website now they do ship worldwide I think well at least I, I know they ship to Australia and it's awesome because they do have like regular sales throughout the year as well so keep an eye out I'm gonna start with my Refa 33 and go into the Cashmere Chamoose and go into this one um, now if you don't have all these palettes and you're wanting to fall on, like, don't even stress, just pick, um, shadows in your collection that are similar, like, it'll be fine. Um, so I'm going to start by, like, stamping this into through the crease, and then I kind of, like, turn it that way and wiggle it around to blend out through the crease. And this will be our, like, transition shade. So Ray Morris, as a side note, which is another brand that doesn't get the hype that it deserves, they had a 20% off sale on their website the other day. So I bought two eyeshadow brushes in the sale while it was on. So they should come next week. So I'm excited to try their um, Ray Morris eyeshadow brushes because now I've got, I've got like four of her face brushes that I absolutely love. So now I'm excited to try her eyeshadow brushes. Now I'm gonna go into the Dark Edit Etendu and I'm gonna go into the green. And this is a What's Up R104. And the biggest reason why I love Viseart is I just think they're the perfect kind of eyeshadow formula for just an, like, the everyday makeup wearer, or, or, I mean, honestly, that makes them sound like maybe they're boring or something. They're definitely not boring. But they're just a really easy formula to work with. They're a softer formula, not like a Chanel luxury shadow soft, because they do have a lot more pigment to them, but they're just... Maybe beginner friendly is the best way to put it. Like, their shadows just blend so flawlessly their mattes are 
impeccable, buttery, blend themselves, so easy to work with, um, great like one and dones, um, and then their metallics are more of like, it depends on the palette that you've got, but their metallics are a bit softer, so great for, you know, if you have mature lids or textured lids or don't want anything that's like too sparkly, too impactful, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, but then even like this new one from them, this definitely is like a little bit more intense than like normal for them. It just depends on the palette, right? But like, yeah, they're just... The quality of a Viseart shadow is right up there with Natasha Denona, Pat, like Pat McGrath when, you know, at the height of her quality. Um, you know, they're just a really, really high quality eyeshadow formula. And I just do not think that they get the love and attention that they deserve. I really don't. And they're just so sweet. Like anytime I post on my stories or anything and I use the brand, like they just say the sweetest things and... Yeah, they're a really great, great brand. So I'm excited to see what they released this year because I know like a little bit ago on their um, Instagram stories, they like were asking their customers what kind of products they want, we wanted to see from them and like do we want to see more impactful like metallics and duochromes and stuff or, you know, that kind of a thing. So I'm excited to see what they're going to release this year. I mean, this green is beautiful. Sometimes these army greens can be a bit hit and miss, but it's lovely. Now I'm picking up just a Ruffer 14. I'm just going to go into a really small amount of the dark brown in the Cashmere Chamus. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly at all. I'm just going to deepen the outer corner a little bit. Just a smidgey smidge. Wiggle that in here. really nice. I like how those colors have really worked well together. They're beautiful. Hmm, I like that. Absolutely stunning. All right. A product that I personally think is underrated is the Pat McGrath Labs Intensified Stick. It is not underrated on my channel, but I never see anyone use this or talk about it on YouTube really. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't genuinely do my makeup without this product anymore. I really can't. And that may sound dramatic and that's fine. I have backups of backups of backups of this product. I just love it. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna dip into this one. This is a refer two, because why not? I always find with my Viseart palettes, like they're always the palette I choose to travel with as well, because I can mix and match the pans to create a color story, but also I just find like pretty much any of their color stories is always such a perfect kind of everyday type color story that you can like make soft looks, you can make dramatic looks with, and then they're also the kind of colors that will go with pretty much any like uh, clothing look or look that you wanna do, like whatever colors you're wearing and stuff. And that's why I personally just love traveling with them as well. So I think you can kind of see like with that eyeshadow, see how it's not like super bubble, sparkly, intense, but it's a beautiful formula still. And then with the intensifiers, it's just kind of like a glitter glue if you haven't, like if you're new here or you haven't seen it before, it's like a glitter glue. And then just for my hooded eyes, it stops any like creasing and stuff like that throughout the day. It just makes my eyeshadow wear really well. And it will amp up your shadow just a touch as well. I honestly, like if I could just have shares in like one product, I feel like it, I would have it in the intensifier stick. <laughs> I don't know if I'd make that much money off it though because I really don't see a lot of people talk about it. I'm just going back into this little dark brown just ever so softly. I'm just going to marry this lightly here. I'm feeling like maybe I'll be a little bit extra. I'm just going to take that refer two and I'm going to turn it to the other side and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this like sparkly gold and I'm just going to lightly just tap it over just to add a little dimension. You could obviously skip this step if you were following along. I just can't help myself. Oh, I love how that's looking though. Look at that. That gives it a little, mm, some, some. I like that. 
I look crazy. I just looked at myself in the monitor and I was like, oh, because my eyes are so dark and I don't have any other makeup on. It'll come together, don't you worry. Let's move on to our face. So for primer, I'm gonna use the KVD Pore Refining Primer. And I really never hear anyone talk about or use this primer. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's not the most pore refining primer that I have ever used. I will say that. It does add a nice, just like, you know, smoothness to the skin. But like, when I think of pore refining, just nothing I've ever tried has come close enough to like the Tarte Poreless Primer. But what I like about this is it does have a nice grip to it, to the skin, like a tact, but it's not as tacky as the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. So if you find that primer from Milk like just too much, which a lot of people do, uh, you might really like this one. And I just find that whenever I wear this particular primer, my foundation just and like wears so well and like throughout the whole day for extended periods of time. And I just think like, yeah, people don't talk about this enough. I don't know if this is underrated, but I use a green color corrector every day. It might not show you on uh, camera, but I do have quite a bit of redness in my T-zone and my cheeks and stuff. So I always use a red, a green color corrector. I really like the Tarte one. It's actually one of the better ones I've ever tried, but that's obviously dependent on your skin type. This is a Sigma F47, by the way, and it is a brilliant brush if you are looking for a kind of like complexion brush. Under eye color corrector is something I use every single time I do my makeup. Whether I'm doing even just like a no makeup makeup look, a natural look, or a full glam look, I'm using color corrector, and I have quite a lot. But one, my favorite color corrector of all time is the Sigma Spectrum Color Corrector in Light Medium, and then they also have like a deeper one. Like you can tell I've hit pan on this. I absolutely love it, and I very rarely see people talk about Sigma anymore period, but also Sigma in their makeup products. And you'll see a few Sigma products, well, at least another one from um, kind of pop up throughout this video because I really feel like Sigma is so, like their makeup products are incredibly underrated, especially their like complexion. Not so much their eyeshadow, like don't get me wrong, their eyeshadow was nice, but their complexion products are flawless in my personal opinion. So I'm gonna, I basically just dip into both shades. This is a, um, Rare Beauty Concealer Brush, so I'm trying to speed it out today. Uh, and the thing that I love about this the most is you can custom kind of make your shade in the sense of maybe one day you need like a bit lighter, but maybe other days you need it a bit deeper, that kind of a thing. It, you really can just tailor it to what you need on the day. And I just find it is hands down the best color corrector I've ever tried. I've got others that I absolutely love, do not get me wrong but this is the best one I have ever tried. And it is just, it's just so underrated. Like Sigma, like I said, cosmetic products, just in general. I know they're famous for their brushes, but do not sleep on their makeup products as well. They're so good. Foundation was a little bit of a trickier one. I have three and I'm gonna show you, like just so I can kind of give two a shout out and be like, I'm not gonna use them today, but just a shout out. I really think these are underrated. And then I'm gonna have the one that I use. So the two that I'm not gonna use, but I think deserve a shout out to be like, hey, you might want to check these out because they're really, they're incredible. The first one is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation. Now, I know that this is a very old product and when it came out, oh my gosh, why is my camera not focusing? Hello? There we go. Um, I know when this came out, like it came out with like, I think a hundred shades and it did have a moment. And then it kind of, you know, like all older makeup products, if you will, it kind of just dropped off the radar. And I think Pure kind of really dropped off the radar. But you guys, especially if you love a full coverage matte foundation, you will love this. It is incredible. Like if I'm having a bad skin day and I just need my skin to look flawless, I will usually use this particular foundation because I know that I will put this on. It will make my skin look absolutely perfected. It smooths like pores and textures. And then it just wears like impeccably for the whole time that I'm wearing it, whether it's like eight hours to 16 hours, it'll just wear so, so well. The other one that I wanna give a shout out to is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. This is flawless. And I know the original one was at the self ref self refreshing, like that really had a moment. I didn't see a lot of people rave about this one. And this is, like I said, flawless, especially if you have mature skin. Like my mom, 
Swiss. She's like, this is the best foundation I've ever tried in my entire life. She's gone through like three or four bottles already. It's the only one she will wear. And it's so good. Now, if you have dry skin, dry, normal combo skin, like it is, it's, it says a radiant finish. I don't really call it a radiant finish finish per se in the sense that it enhances texture or anything. I actually find it to be quite smoothing on the skin, but it, it does feel more hydrating, if you will, and like plumping, but in a really nice way. Like it does not make my skin oily or anything, but if you do have that combo to oily skin, like especially oily skin, you're going to want to really set your face um, where you get oily because it does have that more hydration in it. So you're going to want to like really set your face. But if you have that dry normal skin, you know, if you don't like setting your face, don't worry about it because my mum doesn't set her face, for example, because she's got like normal dry skin and still wears fall asleep. But it just, it just plumps your skin up in such a nice juicy way. Like you've had a facial and it is like a medium to full coverage. I usually worry about a medium coverage and it just kind of like perfects everything. It wears really well, like probably about 12 hours is, is what I would say it's like most wear time is. But it really makes your skin just look super healthy and plump. And I just, yeah, I know a lot of people liked the self-refreshing. I didn't personally like that, but this one was, whew. And then the one that I'm going to use, and you guys see me use this all the time, so it's probably boring. And I'm sorry for that, but I really, this is like the best foundation ever. I really do feel that way. It is so good. It's the KBD Good Apple Serum Foundation. So this is in the shade Light 12. This is the one that we're going to use. Like mine is battered and bruised. I usually like to apply my foundation just with my Juno & Co Cloud Sponge. As I said, uh, you guys have seen me use this <sighs> countless. Normally I actually mix in my light shade as well. I have like light six and I usually mix the two together to create my perfect shade. But I'm just being lazy today because I have a high neck on. Um, it's, <sighs> you guys. It's perfection. It is pure perfection. It's a serum. So you know those serum foundations, a lot of the times people love wearing them because they, they truly feel like you're not wearing anything on the skin. It's just incredibly lightweight. But for me, those kinds of like serum foundations, normally they don't have any coverage to them. And I do like a, a medium coverage at least. And so I find with like a serum foundation, I'm like, what's the point? Because it just feels like I've put like a serum on with a, a teeny little bit of coverage on it. This is a serum foundation that is so lightweight, you literally just feel like you're wearing like nothing on the skin, but it has coverage. And like, you can put this on so that it is a medium coverage. You can put this on so that it's a light coverage, but you can also put this on so that it is a blank slate coverage. And all of those coverages, it will still look as natural as possible on the skin. The less coverage you have, the more natural it looks. It's kind of like any kind of product right uh but even like building this up to a full full coverage it still looks pretty natural considering it is like a full full coverage and i just absolutely love and adore it it's smooth texture it doesn't settle in fine lines and this will wear for like 16 plus hours and like not budge it's incredible i know that the like kvd Good Apple Balm Foundation really had its moment on like the TikToks and stuff because of the way, you know, those videos of like people applying it and stuff. But this foundation did not get the love and hype that it truly deserves. It is really, truly one of the absolute best foundations on the market. Concealer that I just think is so underrated is the Urban Decay Quickie Concealer, which if you've been around here a lot, you've seen it a lot because it is my favorite concealer in my collection. I swear by this stuff. So I have 30 NN and 20 NN and I just like to mix them together. I kind of have weird colored under eyes where I mix them together. But if you don't like, if you use me as a shade reference, you can just get away with 20 NN um, as a side note. And I just like, but I like to mix them. But this foundation, uh, concealer, gosh, I don't know words today. <sighs> I don't see anyone talk about this product. I really don't. And it is so, so good. It is so full coverage. Like, and I guess to keep in mind, like what I'm looking for in a concealer is I'm looking for a full coverage concealer that is very lightweight, smooth texture, doesn't make my dry under eyes look drier. Um, I'm asking for the world, to be honest with you. I do have darkness. I do have pigmentation, that kind of a thing. And this concealer just does it all for me. I love it. It's kind of like a very thin version and more hydrating version of the Tarte Shape Tape. Like it's like everything that you, cause you know how everyone loves the Tarte Shape Tape or loved the Tarte Shape Tape because of the coverage it provided. But then, it, you know, if you're kind of like over 30 as well, or you just 
maybe it's a bit heavy or thick for you or it's too drying on the under eyes but you want that level of coverage then that you want this concealer because this concealer is so thin on the under eyes it is not overly hydrating in the sense where you know there is concealers like the tower 28 concealer for example example <laughs> i can't even speak today example that is a hydrating concealer right like that is gonna hydrate your under eyes so it's not hydrating in that sense but it's not drying it's hydrating enough where it doesn't like add it's hydrating enough where it doesn't dry them, but it's not so hydrating where it's like almost an eye cream on the under eye kind of thing. I don't know if that makes any sense. But what it does do is it smooths my texture on my under eyes. It doesn't settle in creases or anything like that. It is full, full coverage and it wears impeccably through the whole day. Like it just wears so well. So I can't get enough of this. I don't know why more people don't talk about it. For cream contour slash bronzer, I mean, I obviously have a heap that I love, but I think one that doesn't really get the hype that it deserves to get is the Tarte Sculpt Tape. Now, I have the shade Cool Bronze, and this actually has a pretty decent shade range, especially because, uh, you know, out of these products, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless one is kind of the famous one. And like, yes, Tarte has very much kind of like ripped off that kind of, I guess, product, if you will, from Charlotte Tilbury. But... That Charlotte Tilbury product has the most appalling shade range, especially considering it is like one of her best sellers and she's just never bothered to extend the range. Um, I'm going to blend this out with my Sonia G Sheer Buffer. Um, two, I actually find the Tarte formula is better. So I do have a video where I compare them. But I used to find with the Charlotte Tilbury, like I just, yeah, I didn't love the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless wand I think is that what it's called like the Charlotte Tilbury wand contour wand I always found like if when I would blend it out like I just blended that out it would lift my foundation if I wasn't careful I had to be really careful with like how I applied it and the shade was like it was fine it wasn't like extraordinary like it wasn't like perfected it wasn't like perfect but it wasn't you know the shade was kind of fine for me but if you kind of had any other skin tone you were kind of screwed because yeah anyway this Tarte one, I personally think is like it. And I think it should get more attention and hype and like fanfare than what the Charlotte Tilbury contour one should get because the product is a lot easily more blended. I don't know if that was an actual sentence, but it is just easy to blend. It doesn't lift any products underneath. I personally, like there's a, I have the cool bronze shade, but there's also a, is it fair bronze? Or there's another shade that's like my skin tone that is more of a cooler undertone. So if you want more of like that kind of like if you need a more grayer contour type effect. And then it also has a bigger shade range. The price point is the same. So it's not necessarily cheaper or anything. Although you can probably get a bigger discount on Tarte throughout the year with like sales and stuff if you're watching their website. But it's just I just actually think this is a far superior product to the, whole, the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand in so many different ways formula shade range and i just yeah i never see anyone use it or give it any hype i know simply blair is with me and loves that product too and like the more i use it the more i love it honestly so don't sleep on it all right friends for under eye powder again a product you see constantly on my channel is the make translucent powder i think one of the tricky things about make is you can only get it off of their website which only ships to like the US and maybe Canada and then also Revolve but Revolve does ship worldwide so you should be able to get it on Revolve um this is the best under eye powder I've ever had if you have dry skin you'll actually like this powder all over your face as well um this is just my Ray Morris Kabuki brush uh but for me I have dry under eyes but uh so this powder adds like it sets them flawlessly while adding a little bit of hydration so they're not dry getting dried out from the powder and like you might say well just don't set your under eyes with powder but i need to like it's a hot mess if i don't i know it's weird um but the other thing is because it has this tint to it it adds this perfect extra little bit of coverage to my under eyes as i set them so it creates this like perfect finish it sets them throughout the day it looks flawless and then it just finishes off finishes off the coverage for me in a way that i like and I absolutely love it. I've been through a whole one of these before. This is a repurchase that I got in like January and I've already hit pan on it. I use it every day. Like you guys see this in every video. This is a bit of a random one and I'm not sure if everyone can get their hands on this, but 
I just, I love this powder so much. This is the Skin Food Peach Cotton Powder. And you get this off Stylevana. Oh my gosh. It looks like this. It is so finely milled. Like it's an, it's an incredibly finely milled powder. It's also the best powder I think I've ever used to set my face. Truly. It is blurring. Um, this is the BKN17. But the best thing about this is like, it is so lightweight. So you don't feel like you're wearing a lot. But it sets. So if you have super dry skin, don't even bother. It's going to be too... This is really for my combo oily skin gals or people. Um, it sets and forgets. Like if you set your face with this, you will not need to touch up through the day. Like it just blurs and sets. I love it. Like when I go to work now, when I work in the office, this is pretty much the powder I'll use. Like this is the powder I use most days to be honest now on my face because especially maybe not so much in winter I won't when my skin gets a little bit drier but in summer with our humidity and everything that we've got going on oh, it is a godsend so yeah it, and it's not I don't believe this is that expensive honestly it's not a luxury product it's like a Korean makeup product flawless truly truly flawless so if you can get your hands on it I do highly recommend and I know it's a bit random, like normally I'm known for like just the luxury makeup products and stuff around here. Look at that. Isn't that perf- oh, you guys, perfecting. Just absolutely insane. I'm going to quickly go off camera now and do my brows. I don't really use anything, I don't think that's like massively underrated. I use the Makeup by Mario brow pencil most days or I go through phases with brow products. Um, so I'm using, I'll use that and then I'm using the new Precisely My Brow Wax from Benefit, pretty good. The Mario Clear Brow Gel. So I'll do that off camera quickly because it's a bit boring and then we'll come back and finish up the eyes. Brows are on, let's finish up the eyes. So I've just got a 13 mini from Rapper and I'll go into a touch of this shadow and I'll run that under here. And then a Ruffa 3, and I'll just go into a touch of the dark brown. And then I'll just take a pencil brush and go into a small amount of that gold and just lightly pop that on the inner corner. So that is the eyeshadow finish. Now I'm going to use my Victoria Beckham Satin Kajol Eyeliner in Olive. I don't think these are underrated, to be honest, but I do highly recommend them. <laughs> For the lower waterline, I'm going to take Olive from Melt, which I do think is underrated because this shade is perfection. See that shade? So good. And then for mascara, we're going to take my Reban mascara because I think Reban as a whole entire brand is that underrated right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> it, every product I've tried from them is amazing, but especially their mascara. So our eyes are done and I personally really love how uh, these have come together. I think they look gorgeous. Okay, for bronzer, we're going to take the Sigma Matte Bronzer in the shade Light. And I, again, so underrated. So, so underrated. This formula is flawless. It actually really reminds me of the Pat McGrath Labs formula. It's just a slightly different shade. So I'm going to take my Pat McGrath Labs bronzer brush. It is so blurring and like buildable and just... It really is such a beautiful product and uh, it truly deserves more hype. Like I keep saying, the Sigma cosmetic products, they deserve more hype. The blushes are flawless, the highlighters are flawless, everything about them. They're just incredible, incredible products. Like look at how blurring and natural and smooth that is. A liquid highlight. It's got to be the Gucci. I mean, I have a few that I love that I don't think get the hype, but... I very rarely see people talk about this Gucci highlighter and it is my all-time favorite, I think. Well, no, that's a lie. I have like a top three or four that I just cannot choose between. It is so good. Yes, the dropper is a little bit annoying, but it's one of the most natural, seamless liquid highlights I've ever tried. Like, you guys have seen me rave about this product 
for the longest time. Ugh. Stop it. It's so good. It is so natural on the skin. It is undetectable. Look at it. I'm sorry. It needs more hype. Is it because... Is it available in the US yet? Is that why it's not got the hype? I don't know what it is, but if you can get your hands on this, trust me, and you love a natural liquid highlighter that just looks like you're an angel lit from within, get it and you're welcome. <laughs> if you are a powder highlight person as well, the What's Up Beauty Serengeti highlighters. One, like look at that beautiful imprinting. Um, this is Safari Sunset. These are gorgeous, you guys. They are so natural. They're like almost a liquid in a powder form. And then you can obviously mix the shades or you've got two different ones. I'm just gonna take the gold um, and set my liquid found, uh, highlighter, sorry, with this. <sighs> look. Mm. And you can build these up to be really blinding or you can make them look super duper natural. And they do not add any texture the, to the skin whatsoever. They are flawless. Like this is such a good powder highlight and it is truly so slept on. I mean, What's Up I think as a whole is really slept on. Their brushes in particular, so good. So good. For cream blush, I know these are, these are new. But I just think because this is a smaller indie brand, it's not gonna, they're still not gonna get the hype that they deserve. So this is the new Glaminatrix Cheek, Cheek and Lip Flushes. So this is in the shade Lavish. I'm gonna take this and I just think these are a run don't walk cream blush product. Now this is gonna look very deep on my hand. I will put it on lightly so that it like shears out, but I think the shade range of these is great because it will suit a variety of skin tones. But the formula of these is like the Rare Beauty Liquid Pinch Blush Formula had a baby with the House Labs pigment paints in the best way but they're not they're just they're not as pigmented as like because you saw how deep that shade was in the back of my hand and like you know I can build this up but I can also really sheer it out that's why I use the sponge so that it like shears it out a little bit when it's a deeper color can put it on over powder as you can see and it doesn't lift any product and it is flawless because it it reminds me of the rare beauty liquid pinches in that kind of like finish where it is slightly plumping if you will but it reminds me of the house lab pigment paints because it is so natural and undetectable in the skin and also incredibly long wearing like it's on once it's on it's on and so yeah, and they have such a great shade range. I've done like a first impressions where I've used them and I've also done like a, I did a three looks one palette with the new Pretty and Pastels palette and I use these in that as well. And I show you like swatches and stuff in both those videos. So if you wanna see more about them, check out those. But like, I just don't sleep on them. They are incredible, truly. And then I don't really have a powder blush. I don't think that's like really underrated apart from say the Sigma ones, but I don't have a shade that's gonna like be perfect for today's look. So I'm just gonna take one that I think probably got hype at the time, but still doesn't get hype. But I really quite like it. And I think that they should still get hype even if they're older and it's the Tom Ford blushes. So this is in Sun Drunk. I'm just gonna mix the shades together. I just think these are a really nice blush. Now they're a luxury blush, so they're not a must have, obviously. It's always like any luxury product. It's a, you know, if you want it, great. But I just find, again, see how they're so blurring and natural on the skin and just, I just, like, I just love them. I love how thin they are. They're very long wearing. Yeah, these don't, I don't ever see anyone talk about the Tom Ford blushes anymore, but I, I think they're amazing. I don't have a setting spray that's underrated. This is the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. I feel like everybody um, intensely loves this setting spray because it's honestly the best on the market. It truly is, in my opinion. For lips, I want to take the Makeup by Mario Lip Liner in Toasty. I don't see a hell of a lot of people talk about this li these lip liners, to be honest with you, and they are incredible, and they're not on Sephora Australia, which is so annoying. I wish they would drop them because I would pick up so many more shades of these. They are a brilliant lip liner. I love how easy they are to apply. They're like this nice, like kind of creamy glide. They're very long wearing. It's just, it's a really good product. 
Then for my lip products, I'm torn between two. One of them is the Sigma Lip Cream, which you guys have seen me use quite a bit. This is in Begonia, but just the Sigma Lip Creams in general. I have quite a few shades of them. So stunning. So stunning. Like a beautiful long wear satin lip cream. So you will need to reapply them, but they're because they're a lip cream, they're a longer wearing than say like a satin lipstick. But they're not as long wearing as like a matte liquid lipstick, which I personally like because it doesn't give you butthole lips or anything like that. And I just love them and the shades are gorgeous. But then also this one, this is the By Mario Lip Suede. And I've I've been talking about this for ages. This is muted mauve. So this one right here. This is so good. Like, this is such a good product. Again, it's like a lip suede, so it's not a full liquid lip in, like, matte liquid lip. You will need to reapply, but it's still, like, hydrating and nice on the lips and doesn't give you butthole lips, that kind of a thing. And I just absolutely love it. So I think I'm going to take Muted more just because, I don't know. I think it's maybe will just suit this look a little bit more, maybe. Look at that color. I'm sorry. It is perfection, truly. And I know his like moisture glows and stuff get so much hype. And I know a lot of Mario products do get a lot of hype. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying his brand is like underhyped or anything, but these lip suedes are gorgeous. I would love more shades of the lip suedes and their lip liners. And then also his glosses, cause like, yes, his moisture glows, they're awesome. I personally love them and rave about them. But this gloss in particular in Golden Nude is the perfect, like, nude lip gloss for those of you that like you kind of nudey, browny lip looks. So this is Golden Nude. It's perfection. It is perfection. This is pretty much empty. I need a new one. Absolutely love and adore it. Like, that lip combo is one of my all-time favorites. So. Alright, let me go do hair and all that jazz and we will zoom out and wrap this up. Alrighty my friends, that is the finished makeup look of underrated makeup products and also skincare products at the start there. I just thought this would be a little bit of fun to kind of shine a light on some products that I just really think are truly A plus impeccable products that really maybe you haven't heard of. I mean, if you watch me a bit, you've probably heard of every single one of them because they're like products that I show all the time. But I just feel like, you know, I mean, listen, I'm not on TikTok and all that kind of stuff, so maybe they are viral products, but from my knowledge, they are not, and I think that they deserve more love and hype. Anyway, that is it. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I want to know, like, what is one product that you have that you think doesn't get the hype it deserves that we might not know about? Let us know in the comments, and if you are watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate you, truly, and I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world, and I will see you next time. Bye!